Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Intro to Biology for Majors, or Biol 1224. This is your Chapter 7 PowerPoint. This PowerPoint comes from Module 2, and it's from your OpenStax Biology 2e book. Chapter 7 covers cellular respiration. Okay, so as always, we're going to start off with objectives. So the first objective of this chapter is to describe reactions vital to cellular respiration. The second is identify cellular location, requirements, and products for the three processes of cellular respiration in eukaryotes. And the third is to describe types of fermentation. So let's talk about energy and living systems. And on this slide, we're going to talk about redox reactions. So energy production within a cell involves many coordinated chemical pathways, and most of these pathways are combinations of oxidation and reduction reactions. Oxidation and reduction reactions occur in tandem. So redox stands for reduction, oxidation. So together they occur in tandem, they occur together. An oxidation reaction strips an electron from an atom in a compound, and then you add the addition of this electron to another compound is then a reduction reaction. So here I'm going to talk about oxidation and reduction in terms of this, which would be representing um, hematite. Hematite is iron to oxygen three or oxide. So in this chemical reaction, we have the iron oxide right here. And this iron oxide is actually losing an oxygen, which means it's been reduced. So we lost one of our oxygen, meaning now we just have the 2Fe. And so it was reduced, loss of that oxygen. And this reduction reaction can't occur without oxidation happening at the same time. So there's an oxidation uh, reaction happening right here. And in this reaction, the carbon monoxide actually gains an oxygen and it's been oxidized. So reduction is on this side, oxidation is right here. So this slide talks about electrons transferring energy. So we're going to talk about cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So cellular respiration is a series of dozens of redox or oxidation reduction reactions in which electrons carry energy from one molecule to another. So we've talked about energy transfer in other uh, slides as well, previous slideshows. But um, this image on the right side kind of shows you what I'm talking about. So in the top left corner, we start off with the sun, which is a light energy that everything pretty much survives off of. So the sun actually hits these chloroplasts. These chloroplasts are within plants. Um, remember, there's chlorophyll inside, which actually um, turns the plant green. But this is a photosynthesis reaction taking place. So photosynthesis puts off oxygen and sugars which makes sense because we've discussed that our bodies use oxygen and then they use these sugars in order to make energy so those enter our bodies where cellular respiration takes place in our mitochondria for example and this mitochondria would be the powerhouse of the cell so it creates that atp energy that currency that we use within our bodies and what we leave over or what we um, do without here is carbon dioxide and water so we actually expel carbon dioxide, which the plants then use, and water, which the plants also use, because the plants need CO2, water, and sunlight in order to go through photosynthesis. So this is a really beneficial process for both plants and animals, and this is just photosynthesis versus cellular respiration. We're still talking about electrons transferring energy, and cellular respiration, the definition I have here is the process of cell uh, catabolism, or catabolism, um, in which cells uh, turn food into usable energy in the form of ATP or that energy um, molecule that we always talk about within the human body. So this side talks about respiration. Um, so respiration involves electron transfer and ATP, which is that energy molecule we've talked about. So inhaled oxygen is consume, consumed in, a, in cellular respiration. Carbon dioxide is then produced as a byproduct when it's exhaled. And that's what we spoke about in the last slide. So animals are net consumers of oxygen, which we get from plants, and then they produce carbon dioxide, which the plants are net oxygen producers and carbon dioxide consumers. Like we said, it's a cycle that's beneficial for both parties. So the cell actually uses ATP formed during that cellular respiration to power, for example, all of our muscle contraction. 
So in my notes here, I have that anaerobic respiration is actually respiration that occurs without oxygen in the cytoplasm. So it's the um, only means to generate ATP for some bacteria and archaea that may be living in areas where there's very little oxygen. Um, fermentation is just another method used without enough, or, yeah, without enough oxygen. So oxygen is not the final electron acceptor in this method. It can occur in humans during very intense exercise. And then lastly, they kind of get into ATP again. So ATP we've talked about before, it's adenine triphosphate. Um, it's a high energy molecule that we use as a currency in our cells. Um, if cells want to do something that requires energy, it will cost them some ATP. And cellular respiration is how ATP is actually made. So these are the three main processes that lead to the production of ATP. So the production of ATP is called the process of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the process that releases energy from the glucose that we take in from plants. So there are three steps before the ATP or the energy molecule is created in the mitochondria. The first step is the glycolysis. Um, the second is the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And the last is the electron transport chain or what we call ETC. So here we're gonna talk about glycolysis, which is the first of the three processes that leads to the production of ATP. So um, glycolysis actually takes place in the cytoplasm of cells. Um, this part of the process, or the cellular respiration process, is where all of the glucose, those sugar molecules, are broken down and turned into two, what they call three carbon molecule pyruvate molecule, molecules, um, which I'll kind of show you in this equation here in a few minutes. Um, so the first part of glyco the glycolysis pathway traps the glucose molecule uh, in the cell and uses energy to modify it so that the six carbon sugar, which is what it normally looks like, can be split evenly into two three carbon molecules. Um, no carbons are created or destroyed in the process. So if we are looking at that, this is an entire glucose molecule. So if you look, it's kind of formed in what they call a ring. So there are one, two, three, four, five carbons and one oxygen here. And this glucose molecule first goes through glycolysis uh, to ADP, um, create two ATP, NADH, create two NADH. And then we have at the end here, those broken up glucose. So we have two halves, which just stretch out to form two different, what they call pyruvate molecules. And um, these are actually called, um, I believe three carbon molecules called pyruvate. So they're called three C pyruvate molecules. So two ATP molecules are actually invested in the first half of glycolysis. So two ATP, which is this uh, little snapshot here, this is two ATP are invested in the process. Um, of glycolysis and four ATP molecules are actually formed during the second half, which produce a net gain of two ATP molecules for the cell. So they're putting in two, they're actually gaining four at the end. So in the end, even though they have to use a little bit, they still gain. Um, it also produces two pyruvate molecules and two NADH. The pyruvate molecules are molecules that are rich in carbon, and the, so that's the pyruvate here and here. The NADH is a very high energy molecule used to produce even more ATP. So it just goes back into the cycle to make more energy. Um, the process of cellular respiration needs oxygen for it to work, but not in all phases. So the process of fermentation is when there is no oxygen at all in the cell and it needs NADH for the glycolysis to keep working. So glycolysis is the reaction that can happen with, which is considered aerobic, needing oxygen, or without oxygen, which then would be considered anaerobic. So this process can happen with or without oxygen. Um, the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain, then second two, um, they cannot happen uh, without oxygen. Fermentation does not require oxygen. So glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, but the remaining reactions all occur within the mitochondria of eukaryotes, which we're gonna hit on in the next slide. Um, in eukaryotic cells, cellular respiration with oxygen requires the pyruvate molecules produced at the end of glycolysis, so this one and this one, actually be transported into mitochondria. There, these two pyruvates will be transformed to enter the citric acid cycle, which is the next phase of cellular respiration. So this is the second phase of cellular respiration, the citric acid cycle, or what you can also hear is the Krebs cycle, it has two names. 
So um, this is the next part of the production of ATP. In this process, the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, it finally completes the breakdown of those glucose, those sugar molecules, which was originally started by the process of glycolysis. So it takes those two, three carbon pyruvate molecules um, from glycolysis and it creates the pyruvate molecules that go into an additional um, amount of two ATP molecules per each glucose. So this is where they gain back those two ATP. So we lost two, we actually end up gaining four in this process. Um, the Krebs cycle is an aerobic process, meaning it does require oxygen. It occurs in the matrix part of the mitochondria. So in this image, uh, the matrix is considered the inner part of um, the mitochondria itself, which this matrix is right here. That's where the citric acid or Krebs cycle takes place. Um, how it works is at first, one of the pyruvate molecules is oxygenated, so oxygen is added, and then there are two pyruvates left. This then causes the two pyruvate molecules to create two more NADH for further ATP production. So that's how we end up getting even more ATP um, out of the citric acid or Krebs cycle. So the last step in cellular respiration is the electron transport chain process, or what they call the ETC process. So this is the pro process that makes the majority of the ATP um, or adenine triphosphate in our bodies. So the electron transport chain takes place in the inner intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So if we're looking at the image, um, like we said, the citric acid or Krebs cycle takes place in the matrix. The electron transport chain takes place in the inner uh, membrane, which surrounds that matrix. So there's an inner membrane and then there's an inner membrane space. And that's the area that we're talking about with the electron transport chain. Um, so this process can only function if there is oxygen. So it's aerobic and needs oxygen. Um, the simplest way to understand this process is that it basically moves the electrons from a high energy state to a low energy state. So it moves from high to low. In the end, this process can actually produce up to 32 to 34 ATP molecules from only one glucose molecule. So the very first two processes here um, break it down and you end up getting two extra. But this process, electron transport chain, makes the most ATP. Um, in the end, you end up with 32 to 34 um, molecules of ATP from one glucose molecule. And if you add all the ATP molecules that were created in the cellular respiration process, you would end up around 36 molecules per one glucose. Because if you remember um, previously, you give up two ATP in glycolysis, you gain two more back in the citric acid or Krebs cycle, and then here you get another up to 34. So you're going to end up around 36 ATP per one glucose molecule that goes in. So this is just the overall, um, the overview of the process of cellular respiration. So we talked about uh, a few different topics here. So the first being glycolysis. Um, in our case, we're actually going to loop in this pyruvate testing. It all kind of goes into the glycolysis area. Um, so glycolysis, um, we start off with one glucose. We end up with um, ATP and NADH. Uh, we have those 3C pyruvate molecules that come over to the citric acid cycle um, where we gain even more ATP. And then lastly, we end up in the electron transport chain where we have um, oxygen and water and the electron transport chain establishes a proton gradient that's used to produce all of that ATP. So the 30, up to 34 um, molecules of ATP produced in this portion. So once again, I just wanna break down how many ATP um, that one glucose can generate. So glycolysis and the citric acid or Krebs cycle each produce about two ATP, so that would be four altogether. And then the electron transport chain um, uh, adds NADH into the mitochondrion, which requires uh, two ATP, but it actually ends up producing a total um, of up to 34. So then the total of the entire glucose molecule would be up to 36 uh, molecules of ATP per one glucose going into the process. So metabolism can take place without oxygen. Um, one of the ways this can happen is ethanol fermentation, which occurs in yeast. So carbon dioxide, ethanol, and NAD plus are all produced 
And for example, and the way that this can be used is by making beer or bread, they actually um, ferment. And so they use ethanol fermentation in those cases. Um, there's also a type of lactic acid fermentation that occurs in animal cells, especially muscles. So the electrons are transferred from NADH to those pyruvate to produce lactic acid. Um, another example of lactic acid formation is in yogurt. But if you've ever run and had really sore legs, uh, your body is forming lactic acid within your muscles. And that's what we're talking about here. So some bacteria and yeast use fermentation exclusively to generate those ATP energy molecules. In lactic acid fermentation, pyruvate accepts two hydrogens from NADH and forms what they call lactate or lactic acid. And in fermentation, NAD plus is recycled in glycolysis for a net gain of only two ATP within that process. So the last slide here just covers uh, what we call connections of metabolic pathways. So all catabolic pathways connect to glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. Proteins and fats are also used as energy sources for the cell, not just ATP. And pathways are not closed, they are porous, so they can let things in periodically. So here are four key takeaways from this slideshow. So uh, the first being cellular respiration involves several pathways. The second is glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm and yields two three carbon pyruvate molecules, so three C pyruvate molecules. Um, three in eukaryotes, they convert pyruvate to enter the citric acid cycle and then the electron transport chain within the mitochondria when oxygen is available. And the fourth is that fermentation occurs when oxygen is not available. So this is the end of our slideshow here. This should be within module two, so you can go ahead and move on to the next. Thank you.